Hello, uh, this is instructions for uh, the thermal image processing. Uh, this is not going to be 100% complete um, because there's things to worry about, like which computer you're actually on. So some of that stuff is going to be ha have to be done um, just in a one on one discussion. But this should be most of the most of the basic steps that you can refer back to when you're doing the processing. So um, some of this you'll be able to skip when you watch it the second time, but I do want to introduce the project a little more if you haven't seen it before. Um, basically, we are, uh, th there's a broad goal of um, measuring tree transpiration. That's how much water comes out on a tree's leaves um, diurnally and seasonally using thermal imagery. So the idea would be that a tree that is um, not functioning properly, that kind of shuts down and doesn't transpire in the middle of the day is going to get hotter because it'll have less water on its leaves and one that is functioning will stay more closer to the same temperature all day. So right now we're preparing for this project in a pilot study and that's what you're seeing right here. This is a sort of a 3D image of um, Ambler campus. It's a suburban um, satellite of Temple campus in Philadelphia and we're just monitoring two trees, um, one oak tree and one maple tree, and they are being continuously monitored for their transpiration with actual probes stuck in the stems of the trees. And so I go up there once a month to fly the drone over them every hour or more. So here's just another view. You've got the maple tree, Acer rubrum, and the oak tree, Quercus, something or other. Um, and then flying a drone that takes thermal images. So here's just a thermal selfie near those trees with a goal of getting data that kind of looks like this. So let's just look at this red curve. This is for one day and the red is just the maple tree. And this is morning, noon, afternoon, etc. And so you're seeing that um, over the course of the day, the tree, the canopy gets warmer and warmer. This, uh, this Y axis, just think of it as just canopy temperature more or less. So it gets warmer based on the imagery, has a big drop because there was cloud cover for this particular flight and then goes back up to what you'd expect and then kind of drops off at the end of the day. And then the oak tree um, stays kind of cooler for most of the day. And so you might expect all things being equal that the oak is transpiring more consistently than the maple because the maple gets hotter uh, throughout the course of the day. So it takes kind of a lot of work to get each of these data points properly set up. And that's going to be what I'm uh, seeking your help with. So Right now we're just looking at one day's worth of imagery. So this is Ambler Campus 2021, September 29th. And I flew 10 times throughout the day. So I'll do an example for round two here to kind of show you what's up. And I apologize, this video might be a little choppy because I'm not like practicing in advance. So first of all, what are we talking about here? Let's just look at some raw images. And of course, I'll refer you more specifically to where any of these files actually are. Uh, but right now we're in an Ambler folder for this day in the XTR, which is uh, the actual name of this uh, sensor, thermal, thermal camera sensor. And I've got one folder for each round and a time of day. So round two, 10, 28 in the morning. And there's going to be a bunch of pictures that are associated with that. So let's blow those up and see, these are just thermal camera images that are kind of hard to make out because there's some extremely cold temperatures that are being shown in, in black. And so that kind of blows out the rest of the image gets rid of the contrast, but we'll deal with that later. So this is the basic thing. Uh, for each time of day, we're looking to translate this whole set of images into basically that one data point for this time of day.
You'll also have access to this lovely data sheet. So this is what we actually recorded on in the field when we were up there. And so you can see the time, the times of day for these 10 flights. Um, and each time of day, there's some important information that's recorded. So we've got the time, which is going to match up with the time of the folder. So 1028, oops, 1028. We have, uh, and then some parameters that are important for correcting thermal imagery to actually represent actual temperatures. So there's a lot of things that mess up thermal imagery and you gotta kinda clean it up. So one thing you need to know is the temperature of the sky. So negative 43 degrees, the sky is cold because it's kind of like space on a clear day. Um, the AGL above ground level, like how, how high this thing is flying, and this is in feet, so 210 feet, but we're basically translating all of these, all of these numbers for the day just to about 61 meters. Conditions, a little breezy, but nothing else to say, no big deal. And then these surface temperatures are just using an actual, like, um, kind of radiometric thermometer, the ones that, like, scan your forehead for COVID now, uh, measuring some grass temperatures. So don't need to do anything with those. All right, so, oops. Where is... So you'll start by opening up R and doing the thermal image, the thermal image processing sheet. So this one is where we're actually doing that correction based on the meteorological data recorded in the data sheet. So kind of basic R practices here that I will, you know, help you get used to, but you'll open up your sheet, you'll Control, control enter runs the code that you're selecting. So we'll open up our libraries of our tools. And then you've got your user data entry. So frequent, that means stuff that you need to change pretty frequently. So where's your working directory? Well, it's going to be the folder that you're working in right now. So this is now round two, 1028. Don't change any of this. This is creating a new subdirectory in there for the corrected imagery. Project name is round two. And like I said, everything is gonna be staying the same, 61 meters off the ground. Object distance, 61, 61 meters off the ground. Sky temperature is going to be negative 43. Air temperature, you are going to get from another spreadsheet. So that is going to be in this same campaign date in that folder. You can see Ambler, T air, temperature, and thermocouple. So you'll open that guy up and you will see that we're continuously recording air temperature for, you know, every five seconds or something like that, or every one second, I don't even know. Uh, throughout the day. And so we want to know what is the air temperature at roughly the time of the flight. And so it's going to be around, what, 1028 we said. Doesn't need to be exact, just sometime in there. So we'll say 1030, air temperature 15.6. So update that. Relative humidity if you don't see a new entry on the data sheet, you don't need to do anything about it. You can see up at the first one, I said 58.5 relative humidity, and then the third one, 58. So very stable, don't need to worry about it. Just leave it the same. Okay, so that's all you need to update to do this whole process. This other data entry is not frequent and you should never need to do it. So now I will just Hit Control A to select everything and Control Enter to run this whole code. And you can see that this is going to start doing, slowly going to start doing the image processing. When you get good at this, you can both do the image processing and the next step um, kind of simultaneously, but we won't go there yet. So I will let this go and then turn, 
turn the uh, recording back on. I'm back. So we ran through all of those images and we'll go back and look in that folder. You can say it created this XTR core, core corrected folder, it got a bunch of new images and also output the, it just tells you the parameters that you just changed. So the meteorological stuff, so we know for later. And that's about it of note. So we're on to the next step now with the corrected images, it's time to actually isolate the canopy temperatures throughout the day, as well as some uh, shade pixels. So basically, let me show you, well, let me show you that, then I'll explain. So there's another script for this. I'm going to clean up all my variables here. XDR crown and shade extraction polys. Got our libraries going. And here again, the frequently changed <coughs> uh, parameters. This one is only once per field date, so you actually don't need to change this. Um, now we're in round two though, so we do change that to 1028 and change this as well round two and here you will add your initials so i know who actually did this run those here's the ones you do not need to change so don't worry about those and then you can just run everything so what's happening here? Well, we we have about we had about 27 total images for about a five minute period. And basically we want to distill all of that into essentially one data point. We're just trying to take a bunch of averages to get some not noisy data. And so the tricky thing here is it's hard to figure out exactly where our tree crowns are, um, first of all. And it's also hard to know what the actual temperature of the tree crown is. So for the first part of that, your job is going to be to draw two crown boxes. So here, I will show you, you just have to know eventually where the two crowns are. Here is the maple. So I'm putting in two corners of a box there. And then up here is the oak. So I'm just trying to get kind of the main um, portion of the crown that's probably sunlit at that time of day. So there's my two crowns. Now, the next thing was clicking sh five shade pixels. And so this gets kind of at the, the correction process here of these this thermal camera is not very good. And so the absolute temperature is pretty far off. Um, so we're basically doing c capturing shade pixels to show in any given image how much does the canopy temperature deviate from shaded ground. And it's that difference that's our actual measure of how hot the canopy is. So we're going to collect five shade pixels in kind of fairly deep dark shade. So, you know, one, two, three, four, five. Now, what we also have going on here is we've set up, you can't see it right now, but I promise it's here. There's an actual, there's a bucket of water with two temperature probes stuck in that water. So we actually know the real temperature. And this is basically to prove whether this shade temperature measure works or not. So we're actually recording the, the thermal temperature of the water as well to compare it to the ground measured temperature. So first thing you're going to do is just zoom in, creating a bounding box around that water. It zooms in because it's hard to see. And what I can tell you is the water is between these three very dark targets. So I go usually right in here between these two. Then you know you're clicking in the bucket. So now you've collected that water temperature. It's easier to see in this scene. It's right here. There's the dark buckets are there to just show you where it is, and those are covered in tin foil, so they look super dark because they're reflecting that very, very cold sky temperature, that like negative 40 to 43 degrees. So then you just keep doing the same thing eight times. So maple, oak, shade, two, three, four, 
five, zoom in on the bucket, and click. Maple, oak, shade, two, three, four, five, and bucket. I'm going to pause. Okay, I finished all eight of those images and the code completed. And if I go back to, let's see, it's in the XTR folder. You can see that this round two CSV was generated. And basically it's picked eight images kind of in the beginning to the end. So they're spread out a bit. Um, and it's recorded the median temperature within each of your um, square boxes for each of those canopies. You can see Acer, Quercus, Acer, Quercus, where Acer is maple, Quercus is oak. Um, it also records some quantile temperatures that we might use later. Here's your median of your five shade pixels and the shade interquartile range. And here is the median, well, it doesn't really matter because it's only one pixel. So here is the, the temperature of your um, bucket of the, of the water. So this is the data that I will use later on um, to actually generate the, uh, the plots that I showed you earlier. So once you're done, you're just gonna say who you are, that I did the temperature correction and I also did the temperature data extraction and any comments that you might have like mistakes you think you might have made or something like that um, I don't know I don't have anything to say about what I did uh, this time um, one thing to note is that if you think you are you've made some kind of mistake which you probably will at some point in the actual collection, during that collection process. Um, it's not really set up to deal with it that well right now, I'm afraid. And so you're basically just going to have to hit, there'll be a stop sign down here, you'll hit that stop sign and you'll have to just run run the code again. So you will, you know, you'll lose a little bit of time there, but you'll get used to it. All right, that's it for now.